morning. Namaskar. I am Dr. Meenakshi Dhar, Professor of Ophthalmology at Amrita Institute in Cochin. I am here to talk to you about glaucoma. What is glaucoma? It is a group of diseases in which the optic nerve gets damaged. Now, what is optic nerve? This is a nerve which takes the message of vision to the brain and makes us see. So, what all is included under glaucoma? In glaucoma, there is an increase in intraocular pressure in most cases. So, what is this intraocular pressure? Our eye is a closed cavity where all the layers are maintained and a pressure within it is maintained by the production of this aqueous humor. Normal eye pressure is between 9 and 21 millimeters of mercury. And if it rises above 21 millimeters of mercury, it can cause damage to the optic nerve. Like you have various cars and you have the normal pressure for various cars. Similarly, the eye pressure which is normal for a person may also not be within this 9 to 21. So every eye may be susceptible to damage at a different intraocular pressure. And that's what give the entity normal tension glaucoma. How does the eye get affected in glaucoma and how do we diagnose it? Unfortunately, there are no symptoms of glaucoma in most cases until the disease reaches a very late stage or maybe 80% of the vision is lost. Hence, this is called the sneak thief of sight or a silent killer of vision. In fact, it is the most common cause of irreversible visual loss in the world. What do you mean by irreversible visual loss? Say, for instance, we all know about cataracts and cataracts are the most common cause of blindness in the world. But when you operate for a cataract, a patient gets back his vision. But on the other hand, what is lost due to glaucoma does not ever come back. Hence, we need to diagnose this early and keep it controlled so that we don't lose more vision. The vision in these patients is preserved centrally till a very late stage. So we lose the peripheral vision first and hence we may not even realize that we are losing anything. So what are the tests that we do for glaucoma? One is intraocular pressure and we titrate our medications based on the eye pressure usually. Also we look at the visual fields which are mapped by a computerized automated perimetry. So like if I am looking at you, I can also see a large amount of field which is around you. So this is what is fields. And in glaucoma, you end up having what we call as a tunnel field. So if I roll a piece of paper and look through that, I'm still able to see the center part of the vision, but the rest all is lost. And this is what happens in glaucoma. Hence, these patients can have a big problem when they are driving because they may not see the person who is trying to cross the road or a person who is going to go past you on the road. Then the other thing that we need to look at is the optic nerve head. There are specific changes which an ophthalmologist can decipher when they look at your optic nerve head during an ophthalmoscopy examination. Also one can do the imaging of the optic nerve head by modern methods like optical coherence tomography by which we can know subtle changes of thinning of the different parts of the optic nerve which is the retinal nerve fiber layer or the macula. Then again, there is a test called gonioscopy, which helps you determine whether you have an open angle or a closed angle glaucoma or what they call as a narrow angle or angle closure glaucoma. There are different populations in the world which are more prone to certain types of glaucoma. The Caucasian population is more prone to open angle while the Asian population is more prone to the narrow angle glaucoma or angle closure. In India, we have both the angle closure glaucoma 
as well as the open angle glaucoma. Now, how do we diagnose? So, we take the intraocular pressure, take the visual fields, the optic nerve head and gonioscopy. If the patient has a narrow angle and is prone to glaucoma of the angle closure type, we can prevent this by doing a prophylactic laser iridotomy. What is that? You make a small opening in the iris by which an alternative pathway for the fluid is formed and the eye, eye pressure decreases. Then is it, what do we do if we are diagnosed as glaucoma? Uh, the patient has to uh, first be determined as to what stage of disease the patient is in. The management has to be with medications, lasers or surgery. The medication once given should be followed diligently by the patient. Generally, we give one or two eye drops and sometimes one drop may contain more than one medication and this is instilled one to two times a day. Glaucoma, unfortunately, is not curable like a cough. You get treatment and then you are treated for it. Instead, we can only control the disease and ensure that it does not progress further and patient loses more vision. So our aim of treatment is to preserve whatever vision is left behind when the patient is diagnosed for glaucoma and the patient comes back for follow-up where the eye pressure as well as the visual fields are measured each time that he comes back. So who is at risk for glaucoma? Apart from the refractive errors, patients who have taken steroids, whether it is as an eye drop or as an inhaler or as a skin applicant or orally as a tablet or an injection, they can all be prone to having steroid-induced glaucoma. This also occurs very silently. So pay other physicians need to be informed that if their patient is on a steroid medication, the intraocular pressure should be checked. So for every patient of glaucoma that we diagnose, there are at least nine who are going undiagnosed. And that is the reason why every person above the age of 40 should be screened for glaucoma. The sad part about glaucoma is that most patients who have glaucoma don't know that they have it. In fact, in the developed countries, 50% of the patients who have glaucoma don't know that they have glaucoma. But in India, 90% of people who have glaucoma are unaware of it. So every one patient of glaucoma that you see, there are nine patients who are lingering around, not yet diagnosed. This emphasizes the need for screening, the need for early detection, and the need for good follow-up once diagnosed through their lives. People who have a family history of glaucoma have higher tendency that their siblings, their parents, and their offsprings can get glaucoma. So people should ensure that they should get screened for glaucoma and get their family screened for glaucoma in case they have the disease. Now, can children get glaucoma? Yes, unfortunately, yes. Some children have it at birth where their eyes actually enlarge and look very big. So, as an ophthalmologist, when I see large eyes, I always look at it with a pinch of doubt. I hope it's not harboring glaucoma. I hope it is not a myopic eye. And this condition is called biophthalmos. Children can also have secondary glaucomas. Also, there is an entity called juvenile glaucoma. And whenever glaucoma is diagnosed at whatever age, it must be treated. Now, our emphasis or the need or how much we treat 
is more for younger people because they have a long life expectancy. And this determines what is our target intraocular pressure, the safe pressure at which we hope no further damage will occur to the optic nerve. Our aim of management for each patient is that through their lives, they live as normal a life, so their quality of life should not be affected. And they just put a couple of drops or take the management required and lead a normal life. There's no need for somebody to be depressed. All that one has to do is that if diagnosed as glaucoma, take the treatment, go for regular follow-ups and ensure that you do not let your disease progress. One more thing I'd like to add is about yoga. Yoga is good, but one must not do any breath holding exercises if one is prone to glaucoma or is being treated for it. Doctor, I have one question. Uh, I was told to use my eye drops every day and to make sure I did it at the same time each day. Why is that important? Well, every medication that we give to a patient has a certain duration within which it has an effect. Every medication that we give has a duration for which it is active. Hence, we need to give it at the same time. In most glaucomas, the damage seems to occur at night. Hence, the doctors prescribe the medications to be given in the evening very often. So that at 2 o'clock in the night or 4 o'clock in the night, when the eye pressure is highest, there is medication available to control the eye IOP. Kya glaucoma ka samman mere blood pressure se hai? Not really. There are some studies which say high blood pressure is related to glaucoma getting worsened, but there is no final verdict on that. In fact, I'd like to add that low blood pressure can actually worsen the damage of glaucoma. And how that happens is, ultimately, your, the glaucoma damage occurs because there is not enough blood supply which is coming along with the optic nerve. And when the blood pressure decreases, there is less amount of uh, blood supply going to the eye and the same kind of ischemic damage occurs to the optic nerve fibers and the effect is like of glaucoma. So I would be more wary and we sometimes see patients who have had loss like glaucoma in those who had say a rapid loss of uh, blood volume or who have a sudden severe dehydration and this could cause a damage like glaucoma but it would be at one point and that won't progress. Doctor, I have a glaucoma in my left eye. Will I get the glaucoma in my other eye as well? Yes, unfortunately, in most cases of primary glaucoma, that may happen. Because all the factors which affect one eye would be affecting the other eye. And there is a genetic component as well. And the type of refractive error. So, one eye may have more progress glaucoma than the other but eventually the others, one can be affected. So for instance, very often we get patients of angle closure. In one eye, we may have the disease, while the other eye, we find that there is an angle close, but there is no damage. So for these, we do a prophylactic iridotomy so that the patient does not end up having glaucoma. This is not true for secondary glaucomas, which occurs after trauma or after installation of eye drops like steroids in a particular eye or after inflammation like uveitis in that eye. In those cases, glaucoma occurs only in the concerned eye. But we should always screen for glaucoma in the other eye. And once it's not there, we can be rest assured it would not be there. Come. But for primary glaucomas, yes, both eyes can be affected. And that is the reason why every person above the age of 40 should be screened for glaucoma.